So uh, hi, Francesca. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me, Edward. Thank you. Uh, so you have quite a bio, um, and I wanted to start sort of with discussing your children's author um, part of it. So okay. you, that's kind of I met you initially with in regards to the children's books and the wellness part. So yeah. I'll, we start with the children's books. Um, so you have a few children's books out. Yeah. Um, about Jack's Roar and Kiki and, and Friends series? Yeah. So so what are the, we can just uh, sort of summarize okay. what we're about that. Well, I, I'm, I'm actually an accidental children's author. Um, I started writing six years ago and started writing my fantasy novel. Okay. I don't read fantasy novels, so I have no idea why I decided to write one, but I was really enjoying it. So uh, I wrote two, I've written two parts of it and uh, and then my my cat died. Okay. Yeah, she she'd been around a long time, and she was supposed to die um, about a year after I got her because she was an unwanted cat, and the vets didn't have anywhere to to home her. How old was she when you got her then? But I got her. Oh no, she was a kitten. She was tiny. Okay. But she had um, feline cancer of some kind. Something, oh, right. some, some some bad thing going on, and um, she didn't have any teeth. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, so she's in a bit of a bad way, so, and she lives to a ripe old age of 14. And um, anyway, I didn't want to just commemorate her with a plaque on the garden bench. And the kids were um, they were sort of 10, 9, 10 years old, so I thought I'd write a story about her. And then I thought, wouldn't it be nice? So I did a rhyming story. I always write in rhyme because I enjoyed reading to my kids um, right. in rhyme you know, Julia, Julia Donaldson and all that, it's my favourites. And, um, and then I thought, well, I need some pictures for it. And it was so hard to get an illustrator to do, because they're all tied up, everybody's got them. They're all yeah, done. And then, exactly. isn't it? Yeah, no, I found the same thing. Yeah, really hard. And then I thought, well, the kids won't mind if it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> just as long as it kind of looks like a cat. <laughs> so I decided just to do it myself. And so I taught myself how to... Uh, scan stuff in and do it on Photoshop and did some brightly colored things and that's kind of how that book was created and I put it on Amazon just to try it out but it's when Amazon was first starting to do the, the, the self-published stuff and so I could share it with uh, the family and friends um, abroad as well because all my family is scattered all over the world right. and then I, I started martial arts myself oh, it's called Kiki the Kung Fu Kitten because she was really tiny uh, but really really sweet as well so, um, where's the kung fu part then? <laughs> the kung fu part is that uh, she would do, as most cats when they're fighting, they do the whole oh, right, yeah. like that. And her name was Moosley because she looked, which was like the color of Moosley. So we used to call her Moosley. Okay. <laughs> Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. So, uh, she, so that the Bruce Lee transmogrified to Moosley, which right. transmogrified into um, Kiki the Kung Fu Kitten. Okay. Uh, and it was all about her and how polite she was and how kind she was and the fact that she was able to fend off big cats with her <laughs> comfy stuff. But did, didn't, didn't actually get into a fight. She just turned into a massive pom-pom. And um, after joining a martial arts centre to try and get fit at the um, ripe old age of 40, five years ago, it's gone almost seven years ago now, um, the instructor there, the owner of the of the academy uh, found out that I'd written this book, and he wanted one writing for his uh, bully busting course that wow. he teaches, that he taught, where he still teaches, to his ninja tops. And that's where um, it was Master James Hudson from the AIM Martial Arts and Leadership Academy in Harrogate, and uh, that's where the Jack's Raw came about. And that actually delivers quite specifically five rules and tips on how to deal with bullying for kids probably age seven or under oh, okay yeah so i did that and i, I illustrated that and i felt quite comfortable i actually really enjoyed that <laughs> more than the fantasy novel yeah. well considering you don't read fantasy i guess that's uh <laughs> <laughs> why would i write it right but, but you have a number in the kiki and friends series then don't you yes yeah, so and then what i decided would be really nice is a bit like you know how harry potter children have grown up with harry potter i thought well, wouldn't it be nice you know because i never think small i always think oh I've this massive franchise that will right. take over the world <laughs> it'll be i can see it in the cinemas now <laughs> your kiki grows you can grow up with kiki so i was going to bring out lots of 
other ones for the uh, the younger children, but also um, books for early readers, so six to nine years old. Okay. I'd say they are probably more the ones that I've brought out so far are for sort of six and seven year olds. All right. All girls. So then I plan to bring out some more after that. But the um, yeah, that range that then developed into Kiki and Banjo, who you meet in the first. It, the, the story carries on. So it, there's a thread throughout the whole series. Okay. And uh, they get together. It's a bit like the famous five, but mixed in with a bit of Buffy the Vampire Slayer kind of thing. And mixed okay. with everything I'm through. I'm sure I can imagine that would catch in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Swallows and Amazons meets Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they just go on, on different adventures. And they have friends called Piero, who's Italian. Had to have a bit of Italian in there for my mother. And your wife is Italian, so she'll appreciate that. Exactly. Um, and he's actually the best character in all of it. He's very forgiving. He's flamboyant. He um, he's he's actually a huge, a great balance throughout all the all of the characters in the books. And then you've got Tiny and Titch, who like some little mice, and then Winston Churchill, and then you've got Lord Byron, and that element of swan in there and a little bit of intellectual uh, and he, he comes with all the good all the, the right things to do which kind of puts every all the other uh, characters in a sort of moral dilemma will they choose the right thing will they tell the truth will will they not oh, okay. and he kind of guides them through not like a mr miyagi or anything <laughs> and then uh, his sons are called edgar allen and poe because i kind of wanted to have a bit of the ninja turtles to have a bit of education oh, going right. on okay you chose some uh, british poets <laughs> yeah um so they they constantly are in battle with the farmies who are the bad cats that live out on Merck farm and um yeah, a, that's not like an urban versus rural kind of thing is it yeah yeah <laughs> oh no but they all live in a village of sleepy meadow where nothing ever happens unless yeah, like, you're looking <laughs> unless you're looking yeah, yeah it's, it's a bit like sorry no i was gonna say the way it is with all towns isn't it <laughs> it is you know like the um what's it called some midsummer murders Oh yeah. It's set down somewhere down south of England in this quiet, picturesque, rural setting of, and it's a bit like that. People don't tend to die though in my stories because it's for six and seven <laughs> years. Yeah, that would it's, it's really good fun writing, so I've written four so far, and that actually was just like, I'd been hit by a bolt of lightning and I just sat and wrote them all uh, in about a week and now I've been bringing them to, you know, polishing them up and illustrating them. And, bringing them out slowly so I've got two I've got one another one coming out this this year and then I'll bring out one or two a year excellent so do they all sort of have similar themes or have you just sort of gone on with uh, whatever story sort of inspires you they follow but they also they follow each other in a sequence but they can be standalone right uh, and the main theme that goes through it as with the younger one the illustrated rhyming book is the metaphor of Kiki's headband, which is every time she puts a headband on, she has like amazing martial arts superpowers. Okay. But the headband, but she, there's no violence because you're not have violence. You know, it's not like um, not like when we were growing up or <laughs> yeah. when I was growing up. Back in the day, yeah. um, so it's a metaphor for self confidence. But all the other characters in there, uh, they all have their own inner victories. And they all have to question themselves whether they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. But I don't push that message too much because I also want kids just to enjoy a story. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it does deal with um, you know the importance of honesty, how not being honest can get you in a bit of a bind. Right. Uh, another one like the circus coming to town, that deals with um, animal cruelty. Uh, and then the... Um, the date, the races, that is all about self-belief and believing that you can win, even right. though you probably don't feel like you can. Right. And then the last one's the, the major, and that's all about respecting your elders and about coming out with a damn fine plan to get yourself out of a pickle, about <laughs> using your thinking outside the box. Yeah. So yeah, they all have little messages. Right. Well, that's important for the kids' books, isn't it? Yeah, I feel so. Yeah. So, so that's quite a number of books, actually. Do you, do you feel um, like not only your, your skill as a children's author has evolved, but also your, your illustrative abilities then? Definitely. Definitely. So, so the ones are really good. You're, you're really feeling confident now. 
Yes, but I wouldn't, I would never um, illustrate somebody else's book. Right. Because I can see how a book should be illustrated, you know, when you read it and you can see how it should, and mine just wouldn't do it justice. And it's, yeah, I'm, I'm telling happy. yourself here. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I'm not, that's not my, that's not my forte. That's just not. But have you had, uh, but you've had good feedback on the books then? I've had excellent feedback on the books. Um, the children love them. The, the parents, I think because they're quite wholesome, mm. but they're funny. I think that the parents are really drawn to them. So they like their children engaging in them. Right. Um, the children that read them, uh, they, like I say, they're six, seven years old. They've just had their nose in them and apparently they can't stop finishing it. Because it, it is, that it, I write page turners for kids because there's always one thing happens and the next thing happens. Right. Um, and I was, I, I, I did write the older books on the basis that I was a bit disappointed when my children were growing up that there weren't too many books out there that didn't make reference to underpants, bottoms or farts. I, it was just the, you know, the bookshelves were covered with that, weren't they? Right. Um, well, here anyway, I don't remember that where I grew up, but uh, <laughs> no, Canada's no. a bit more calm, I suppose, in that regard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, I, I, I've, I've enjoyed doing the illustration anyway. Um, but that's not, as I say, where my, my, my strength lies. But what I have found, <laughs> what the, the real thing that grows, and you probably feel this as well, when as an author, is your entrepreneurial skills. <laughs> right. You kind of have to, don't you, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like, yeah, I write, whatever. But this is, my, this is where I spend all my time. <laughs> yeah, trying to get people to... Trying to get people to know. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas most people who aren't writers, they're the opposite. They find the struggle is with the writing, don't they? And they're quite happy with their marketing and their everything yeah, else. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we should uh, get onto your broader writing then as well, and then we'll move to the, the wellness side of it. Because you also write, um, well, you write self-help books as well. Qu quite a number yeah. of them by the, by the looks of it. <laughs> yeah, that that again wasn't um, wasn't intentional. Um, what I it started off as I think a lot of self help books do. Perhaps I'm being a bit presumptuous here. Obviously, you have one end where it's the the people who are highly qualified and skilled in their areas of of psychiatry or just of um, of the body or, or nutrition or complementary therapy. I came from the other end, which is somebody that's going through it, you know, the shepherd, um, whereas I used to be a sheep. I'm just one step ahead, maybe. Or the um, Sherpa, as they're sometimes called. Yeah, I'm not that far yet. Um, so I, I just thought I'd share what I'd learned. And it was only after the third book that I realized that it was, the writing was, was my own journey, my own cathartic journey of what I was going through. Mm, okay. Yeah, and, and so I tried a lot of different things to help me as I was going along. And what happened was, so I, I, tr um, I it, it eventually evolved into six books where I'd kind of touched, I felt, on a lot of the areas that people need to look after in their life if they want to feel good. So there's the finances, and that's the one I started with, because if you don't have your finances sorted, it's kind of people's yeah. biggest worry, isn't it? Yeah, especially now. <laughs> well, especially now, yeah. Uh, and if you're worried about your finances, you can do as much meditation and yoga and whatever and running and fitness, but the worry is the biggest drain on your health. Right. So I felt that was a really important thing was to get people understanding about how to be sensible with finances. That's how, what that is. I'm not qualified to give any other advice. It's just how I manage. I mean, I'm a single mum and I've been not unemployed, but in my own employment, um, I haven't been in the rat race, let's say. I left the rat race <laughs> 18 years ago. Oh, wow. okay. And so it's very important to understand where, where you're at with your money. Um, right. it, uh, yeah, a lot of people don't, especially writers. They, and it's not, <laughs> I'm not being, I'm not being, condescending but artists because this is how I am we tend not to be bothered about the exact figures or what's coming in what's going out 
Yeah, I think maybe that's a bit of a self-defense mechanism in some cases, isn't it? Because you often don't have much coming in. <laughs> yeah, so you kind of just do this, you kind of don't look. Yeah. And you just see like lumps and bumps and you just think, well, yeah, I think, I think I've got about enough to cover that bit. And then that bump looks about big enough to cover that bit. And you just think you're okay. But you haven't got, if you haven't got a firm hold of it, it can be very, very stressful. Yeah, I've kind of um, gone through that type of men mentality shift in the last, I don't know, maybe five or so years myself. Mm -hmm. Just sort of being aware of the importance of that whole side of the, uh, the equation, shall we say. Yeah, it's empowering. It is, yeah. It's a completely different mindset. I guess it's almost, in some ways, like growing up a bit, isn't it? Because yeah. you're having the fun and then you, you're sort of like, okay, I can actually, but, but not only is it growing up, but it's also, like you say, freeing and empowering because then you start to realize, you know, okay, where you can spend your efforts and whatnot and, and how you should manage your uh, life, which seems constricting on the surface, but it actually frees you up from a lot of extraneous things that might take it take time and whatnot yep and it's very revealing if <laughs> i don't mean that -hoo -hoo. i just mean when you actually stop and look at your finances you can see be surprised sometimes where you are spending your money oh yeah <laughs> definitely because i was <laughs> I was like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, i went through that as well <laughs> yeah so it's very it's very enlightening and it's very empowering and and i think it's an essential step in any healthcare and i just don't I don't think enough people do it. I don't, you know, most people are always talking about the obvious, mm. whereas to me, that's, that's, that's the first thing you should do. Yeah. yeah. Live you, within your means. <laughs> you do have quite a number of other books on drinking, stopping drinking, stopping smoking. Are they all sort of, I've noticed uh, you've kind of hit a, a new niche as it were in terms of book size. Like I don't want to pigeonhole you necessarily, but. Quick read. Yeah, there's like there's that's a that's a fairly new thing that evolved from the self-publishing, isn't it? Because the traditional publishers would never sort of publish these short things. I I didn't follow any guide, I sent or or any example. I simply wrote what needed to be said and didn't want to write anything extra. Because if you really want to give something up, the information's there, the steps are there, and you you either follow them or you don't. Right. A lot of people enjoy reading as something that tells them to give up because they feel like it's they're doing it, but they're just reading. Right. <laughs> so they're doing. <laughs> you see. Yeah, well, it's it's kind of that the thing when you're writing a book and you first start writing a book and you're like you tell everyone you're writing a book and then you never actually write the book because you just you've told everyone and you feel so good about telling everyone. <laughs> yeah, but there's the action part, isn't there? Yeah, so exactly. I. I, I didn't want to waste any words on things just repeating what I'd already said. If I wrote them again, I think it's a bit, it's a bit like in a fictional story, you don't kill off your, your main character. Readers don't like that. Mm. Okay. It's kind of like an unsaid rule, really, if you, yeah, if you okay. want to be liked. Well, it also helps you build further stories, but anyway. Yeah. It does, it does. <laughs> well, you have to re resurrect them like they do on, on uh, you know, all the Marvel. Superheroes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I probably don't get merits for um, entertaining my readers in the sense of holding their hand and taking them along the journey. But what I have provided them with is tried and tested methods that I've used. So all I ever do, uh, because I, I did used to smoke and I did used to drink, and all of that comes from my journey and, and the system that I use, because I thought, well, if it worked for me, then it might work for other people who are like me. But nowadays, you can do all kinds of stuff for giving up smoking. Yeah. If I'd have known about hypnosis, I'd have just done that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work for everyone, though, does it? Yeah. <laughs> you won't smoke. Oh, ah, great. Done. <laughs> done. But it's nice the, the short, the quick reads, aren't they? Because um, if you're serious about it, you will just, you know, you just want that one subject, the quick read, give some points. You don't want to wander through a, like a 400 page mm -hmm. manual on it or anything. But even better, actually, Edwin, what's, what's sold better are the audio books. Oh, really? Because they're just like a couple of hours long. All right. So yeah. you think about it, you listen to it in the, on the tube, or you listen to it in the car a couple of times here and there. Or it's done within right. within one day gardening. If you, I don't know if anybody gardens these days, but you understand, it's like it's 
it's a manageable size. So in Yorkshire, everyone gardens in Yorkshire. Gardens. <laughs> okay. um, so that's quite interesting. So how, yeah. when did you start making the audiobooks then? Uh, as soon as I finished publishing it, I thought I might as well make an audio because it's completely free. So I always did the 50-50 with ACX. So I just put my books on there, said, does anybody want to do them? If you do, it's 50-50 with royalties. And so I didn't really have to do anything. I just had to make another cover, different size cover, and then just listen to the audio and see which person I liked. All right. Yeah. It was interesting. I did like I, when I went looking through your books on Amazon. I saw that you can uh, now listen to a little clips yeah. from the audiobooks. I was a bit surprised. Like I was looking at the "How to Be Happy" one, and I was expecting something similar to your voice. And then there was this like deep male voice that really he's, put me off. Actually, <laughs> oh, but he's got a great voice for it. If you, <laughs> okay. if you didn't know, if you didn't see me or expect me, sure, yeah. yeah. But I can see, I can see why. And a lot of people say that you should read your own books. I've heard the opposite in general, um, because most our, uh, authors are not very good voice actors yeah. necessarily. So I mean, we—I mean, I do know a few in our area that re do read their own books and are quite good at it, but mm. most of them don't have very good uh, inflection and you know, breath control and whatnot for reading. Okay. So I've heard um, as well. But. Well, I, I enjoyed him. him. I, I loved his. It was it was D, uh, D. E. Hardick who read that one. Okay. He just got this fantastic voice. And so it was quite easy to to find the um, yeah. actors for that. Yeah. Did they do all the work basically in putting it together? Or they, they did the recording, obviously. But uh, they do. What happens is you just send off uh, the um, audition, and then you listen to however many reply, and then you choose one, or you don't if you don't like any of them. Um, there's no no obligation. And then you send them the script, which is essentially the book. I mean. I learned after the first one to take out graphs and things like that because they read everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do an audio script, send them that, and then they read it and they make it. And they have um, the guidelines are sent to them by ACX, mm. who are fantastic. You can write to them, they, they respond. It's like KDP. They, they always answer within a day and they always tell you exactly what it is that you need to do. And they just tell them what levels everything needs to be at and how long and what needs to be included in the first part and what, you, what needs to be included in the final credits and that kind of stuff. So, hmm. so you found it pretty easy then? Good. Extremely easy, yeah. Maybe I'll have to try that at some point. <laughs> the hardest part is the tax form you have to fill out yeah, yeah. as a US citizen. But they've, uh, uh, they've made that a lot easier um, lately. Um, it used to be much more involved. You actually had to do the paperwork and everything. Now it's just a... An online form typically no online all online yeah so that's quite nice yeah. compared to when i started looking at uh kindle publishing and create space i was like oh my god this w8 form and everything <laughs> like, yeah it was create space when i started yeah 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 that was a little trickier yeah exactly now and now it's so streamlined i'm just like why wouldn't you self-publish <laughs> just get in there exactly because the thing is you might as well self-publish um even if you're going to then ask like for example those those fantasy novels which i have every intention of finishing <laughs> i want those to be traditionally published at some stage um but I, the rest of it no i think i think what i have deserves to be read i also have my work edited for the children's stuff mm, okay just because i i want to make doubly doubly sure even though i am an editor anyway i want to make sure and have a you know another set of eyes on my work. And so is that largely for content then to make sure it sort of is at the right level for the audience or? No, no, it's just to make sure I haven't missed anything because you, you always go typo blind when you read your own stuff. Right, okay. Um, and just to see, sometimes I'll, I'll put in too much text, too much maybe too much talking or over explain something. So yeah, I suppose like, like what you said, just to make sure it's age relevant. Okay. Um, just a, just a safety net. Yeah. What I really love about self-publishing is the, like you were just saying, right? It's the the flexibility and the freedom. So yeah. you, you can decide, okay, this set of books I want to self-publish, and then I will try to yeah. traditionally publish this set if I can or whatnot. If you can't traditionally publish it, then you can just fix it up so you like it and self-publish it anyway. So exactly. It's, it's awesome. Exactly. 
the world is our oyster. It is. Or the yeah. world is our library. I mean, also, <laughs> the other thing is that um, you can do what you want with your, with your, is your property. So sometimes I'll notice uh, I want to add something. I, I can just go straight in and change it. If I had to go to an editor and a publisher, agent, whatever, that would just never happen. Yeah, that's it, definitely one of the great things. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I couldn't imagine having to wait. Because <laughs> I, I had to change my um, my web address because you know at the back of my book um, I've got my my web address um, for the kids so that they can join. Right. Well, originally I had it printed with .dot com. Oh, okay. And somebody had taken that. So oh, no. <laughs> as a self published author, I can go back in and change that. Yeah. You know, just change it so it's the right right address instantly. Yeah, no, this is wonderful. One of the benefits, and I also did this workshop where, um, and it's an online course now, I help writers think about other ways that they can make money from their books. And one of the ladies who attended, I, didn't, I just didn't think, because she, she's traditionally published, and she sold like 5,000 copies, still poor. <laughs> she can't do anything with her book because she doesn't own the rights to it. Yeah, and I just thought, thing, you put it's all your that effort work. in. Yeah, you put all that effort in, and and someone else owns the rights to it. It's, it's yeah, like, uh, so she couldn't. She she from after doing the workshop, she was uh, going to write another story and then use use the uh, the work that I'd given her the ideas to for that. But for her previous work, she couldn't apply it. Right. You have a number of online courses, don't you? I remember uh, I went yeah. through the. The book proposal course which was quite good um, only quite but, good edwin only quite good, quite good. <laughs> well i can't stay fully because i just went through it quickly and i have to go back now once i get the time don't worry the re there are reviews there it's very <laughs> good it's very good no that's fine um yes thank you for mentioning that they i have just done another one uh for kids so i've got uh, two up for books and I've put them on Udemy and also on my website. I figure Udemy is good because that's kind of like a ready-made platform. I don't have to advertise. They do all the advertising. You don't get a lot of money from it. Okay. And then I do, uh, I do it from my own website as well. Do you set the prices on Udemy then? Yeah, but they always sell it for nine ninety nine. You can yeah, set it whatever that. price you like. I've often, well, before I even thought about making my own courses, I would go there and say, oh, these courses are 200 and then you wait a week and they're like, yeah. Or something. <laughs> yeah. You can set your own promotion and then send that out, and then you get extra money for it because it comes from your link. There's all that kind. There's a lot. You oh, know, like an affiliate learn. type. Yeah. Self affiliation or something. Yeah, and and you can, and admittedly, like I've got one up there which is it's an extensive course because it has uh, the bullying element. It's all about um, helping kids become more confident, mm. and so it has three of my books in there which you can get the whole book you can get the audio downloads for the books and you can get all the stories um it is a narrated audio as well video so you can see it right. and then it has all the uh lessons drawn from it and lesson plans so um it's got you know the key key stuff in there it's also got my positivity journal which is like a six week lesson plan for, for journaling and how that can help change shift ch uh, kill children's mindsets to or problem solving and I can mindsets and it also has the uh, 10 essential life skills that I go through so I set that one at just under a hundred pounds and sometimes it's sold at 19.99 okay <laughs> yeah so it's not always 9.99 and that's one of your that's one of your courses yeah so you got twice yeah. more than the usual discount <laughs> <laughs> Because I was noticing when I was going through your book list on Amazon, you have, um, what is it, Positivity Journaling Mental Health Manual, which you've targeted at schools by the looks of it. Is that yeah, that's the, that's the manual for the teachers. All right. So that, you, were you commissioned for that or did you? Yeah. Oh, you were, okay. Harrogate Ladies College, they commissioned the Positivity Journal. Um, it's called a Positivity Journal because they wanted, some, they wanted a journaling course. And when I said to them, journaling is a really private thing. Mm. So if you're going to get your pupils to write stuff, you know, you can't really read it. Yeah, it <laughs> It's going to be hard to teach that. So I said to them, you should do something a bit more 
that is all about noticing the positive. So we came up with the idea with, it was the director of wellness because they were one of the first schools in the UK to set up a wellness center. Okay. Um, so they, they actively encourage the children to partake in meditation to, um, in a PSA, PSHE lessons. Uh, it's all about um, gratitude, being thankful, um, being more mindful, um, as well as all the other stuff that they have to learn. Right. So what I did is I then packaged that up into a manual because I did the teacher training there and I delivered the first lesson there. And then I trained the teachers and I packaged that up into a manual and I put that up on Amazon as well for right. other schools. I think you're a much better uh, business person than I am because I... I did uh, Code Club. I volunteered to teach Code Club there for like two years. I didn't get any money out of it though. So <laughs> yeah, well, schools. I, aren't... I should have put some book together or something. I don't know. <laughs> schools so. aren't, um, you know, known for having no of money. They don't like to give it away too much. <laughs> no. And usually with schools, um, they have to approach you if they need something. Otherwise. Right. Because even even my bullying books, you know, and it was our anti-bullying week, and I offered my services completely free just for the kids, just to add something. I only got in one school, and we've got a lot of schools. Yeah, well, my wife developed a, a care program for it for um yeah, four, five, and six years. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, the same kind of thing though. So about half the schools in the area were happy to have her come and take Good. a day or something and the, and the other half were just sort of non-responsive which got half yeah kudos for that yeah yeah so it did go well i mean i videotaped yeah. a few of them and we're looking at creating some books so, so that she doesn't have to go around all the schools all the time that's it <laughs> but, yeah. um but also if she if she wanted to approach the um harrogate wellness uh, director it would be a good idea uh, because they also have conferences where all the other teachers come Oh, okay so that would be a good a good stepping stone for that kind of material i'll make a note of that yeah um so this segues then well into your um your wellness and writing business that you've you founded basically yeah, so I noticed, yeah. So, so how did you like what, what was the sort of stages that you went from i mean did you start the wellness and writing first or do you write the books and then went into the... I wrote the books first, um, and that's where I noticed that nobody was looking after the writers. No, oh, okay. And because I uh, have been working at a desk my entire life, but I'm extremely active, um, I felt that, again, I could share how I do it and, and how I manage. Because I noticed a lot of people said, well, how, how, do you, how come you keep having all these ideas? How do you get all these ideas? And how, do you, how come you just write a book? So if I would say, my, my, I'm a bit brass sometimes, and the people say, oh, just write it, just write it. If you feel it's like you're gonna, <laughs> just write it. But anyway, I thought I'd be a little bit more gentle about it and actually impart my, for free, everything that I do as a, as a writer to, maintain my wellness even though i don't necessarily do it deliberately so i had to kind of do a bit of psychoanalysis and like well what is it that i actually do <laughs> right yeah. um, because i don't set my day out i don't have like an agenda that says like tick must do this stretching must do this must do that at all what do i do so i broke it all down and uh, so yeah, that's what happened it came kind of it was the, the chicken before the egg really yeah, I'm jealous that you can do your exercise sort of spontaneous and you feel to because if I don't tick, 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 then I tend to sit at the desk all the time and get hunched backs and broken body and stuff. <laughs> well, that's what writers, you see, you're, you, you actually hit the nail on the head. You're more likely, you're more the writer. I'm the accidental writer. Yeah, I, I, came, from, I came from a business background or at least a corporate background. My, 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 my true background, I suppose, my qualifications is in languages. Oh, okay. And then I moved into business um, through my languages. And the writing came about accidentally. And also it was, well, it was for my cat and my children and then, and then to, to help myself through some difficult times. So the, the wellness part of it, um, that was also just, to me, it's, it's something that I just do 
whereas the writing part is something that you just do that's your natural that's where you're happy and i noticed that a lot of writers are the hermits and they are the ones that will just sit there and bent over and and write without 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 stopping because they're in the flow their muse muse is there and they have to they have to keep going there's very little thought like something from lord of the rings with the hunched over and <laughs> <I'm vicious. laughs> actually that's, 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 that was on the front on my front page of my um of my blog site i had a, a golem and said this okay. is what happens to writers who don't practice self-care but that kept appearing everywhere and i thought that really doesn't go well with my title <laughs> wellness and writing it's true though i mean i i often say um I mean, mentally, I feel much younger than I am. Just, you know, ideas, creativity, everything, and just interest in the world. Physically, I feel like 20 years older than I am. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I've kind of figured out somehow, but uh, now I get to the point where everything starts interfering with getting better because, you know, bad joints and everything. And You do literally have to tear yourself away I, from I do death. Have, Yeah, I have to set timers and stuff like that, yeah. You do. And yeah. my... My, uh, if you if you can't do that, my top tip would be to do it before you start. Yeah, well, that's that's nice because uh, right now my daughter and I go for a walk in the morning. It's nice, isn't which it? It's is very helpful. Yeah. It's and then you've done it. The morning, but yeah, I should do it a bit more often though. <laughs> Once a day, maybe not quite enough right now, but. But also, never see it as a chore. That's no, what I, yeah. never. If that's you want to enough. do anything, it must never be initiated or thought of from a place of lack because then you're already saying that you're missing out on something and then you definitely won't do it yeah it does have to be a sort of lifestyle choice or incorporation or something you, know? you do yeah but you have to want to do it and if you don't want to do it then if this is this is how i do all my books about breaking habits if you do not want to do it stop asking yourself to do it because you're just pushing it further away. Yeah, it's true. But at some point, uh, at the same time, there can come a point where you, you have to do it. And so you have, is there some way, like maybe there's a book in there, how to convince yourself to want to do it? <laughs> the last book, that one. Right. It's all about motivation. Now, I wrote it after I um, tore my ACL ligament. Okay. which meant I couldn't run, I couldn't do anything. And me, in my lifestyle, I depended on being able to, to do that. And so getting back from, you know, running six miles a day to being overtaken by 90-year-olds with their Zimmer frames on the way to, <laughs> I know to what town, like. <laughs> it was a slow, it was a slow process. And so, again, I looked at how do I do it? And the point being music to for, for me is a huge factor in my exercise mm. if you get your tunes on <laughs> you get get them in on your headphones yeah. and you get the right ones you got you gotta have a you gotta have a killer playlist that's that's a definite motivator get into your groove then <laughs> yeah it does it changes you instantly but you've got to make that little switch from, I really want to finish this, and I know my back is burning, I really, I know, but I really want to finish this, to if, just sticking them in your ears, and it will shift you instantly, literally instantly. And the second one was, um, it was like a, it's a Shinto uh, Tendai Buddhist method that I, that I learned, which I did for about a year, I, then I just, dropped it because i'm not i'm not too in the woo woo stuff but it really helps you get rid of a lot of um mental debris so the whole thing about focusing on what's important is suddenly a lot easier so if you just take that 10 minute walk in the morning mm. and don't make it 20 just make it a 10 minute walk you'll clear your head because walking is a form of kind of it's a meditative practice because right. you have different types of meditation you have the lying down you have the sedentary just as long as you're, you're spine straight and then you have the walking meditation as well which you you could do yeah and that's and the point is that, quite nice definitely yeah and and you clear you just have a little spring clean and you, then you know 
what you need to focus on every day. But you have to do it every day and remind yourself. Yeah. Well, that's the nice thing with the lockdown is, uh, well, prior to the, the relaxing of the lockdown a bit, because we had sort of one period of exercise per day, it was like, okay, let's get our exercise in in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, my daughter also said uh, she 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 felt much better starting with the walk in the morning rather than waiting yeah. until later on just to get going. Basically, it's just a lovely habit to get into. See, everybody who's got a dog, they're okay. They've got an excuse. So what you need is an excuse. <laughs> and you already said it. Your daughter has kind of been that excuse to walk in the afternoon. Your second one. Yeah. So hey, just drag your daughter out every morning for a walk. <laughs> yeah. Well, we might get the bikes out. We'll see about that. But uh, yeah. That'd be a nice one. Get some more, get some more uh, cardiovascular going as well. Mix it up a bit. Uh, yeah, it helps helps your brain. They're doing the uh, pots and pans outside. You know, oh, they. Okay. Uh, I think our neighborhood stopped doing that. I don't hear it over here. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you live? Nasty end of town. Well, really I don't know. They were they were serious for a while, and then <laughs> I don't hear anything right now. So maybe they haven't started yet. <laughs> they were on the east end, so you know, east ends are. <laughs> yeah, no, they're all mean old bunch, aren't they? <laughs> It's one guy out there with a tea strainer. <laughs> Staring whether his neighbors are out or not. <laughs> no, they're pretty good though. We get along well with our neighbors. Yeah. yeah, that's what I love about where I live because we've got the uh, the railway, which is just, it's not used anymore. It's got the bri old bridal path running All right. by it. So it's absolutely beautiful. And, and Nid Gorge is there with the viaducts and right. the woodlands. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better place to get stuck. Has it been quite busy in the, the gorge pathway then? I go in the mornings, but in the afternoons, my son has been out and he said, yes, it is extremely. How much social distancing then? <laughs> no, not really. Actually, some people do, they, they walk off the Beer path. Off into the bush. And <laughs> yeah, fall off the cliff, fall off the viaduct. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's people have been actually very, well, around here, they've been extremely patient. Yeah, I think in general in England, it's uh, they've, they've been noting that that uh, yeah. we've responded quite quite patiently. I think patient is a good word. <laughs> it's patient, Begr begrudging <laughs> patience, but but patiently. Yes. In fact, I wanted to to touch on that. Like the uh, last thing before we go, sort mm -hmm. of um, since you're into the wellness. So, so what about the wellness during the lockdown then? Because obviously there's we've touched on the physical side of that. There's also the mental health side of that, and just the whole being so into your family and everything. <laughs> No, I'm, uh, I actually didn't really have any effect from it at all. Um, the person who suffered the most in our family was my 19-year-old son who's training for his boxing. And he did extremely well up until about a week ago where he just really wants to get into the, into the ring. Uh, he can't, that's the only thing he can't do. Right. And also because all those teenagers they're at that stage in life where they need to progress to the next stage you see i i am at a stage in life where i've done everything that i want to do i've traveled i've got what i want i am at that end of life whereas they're all at the beginning and right. they need to feel that they are moving towards because uh, their life's just started yeah, just, to, just to get out there into the next stage isn't it yeah but he did he's done extremely well he um started writing a novel oh, he's done uh, wonder where he got that idea from <laughs> um, fantasy novel yeah it's, it's actually amazing <laughs> gonna race you then you is there a race of, you know challenge no 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 but it's better than me <laughs> no I, I just wonder if he's just spurring you on or are you gonna race to see who finishes it first or you're just giving up he's already no been. no mine mine will be done when i'm you know retired somewhere <laughs> i've got a I can start smoking again and get a bottle of whiskey and forget all this wellness stuff and sit in my, my shack at the bottom of the garden and then I'll write my, 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 my trilogy. Um, so he, he's, and he started playing the guitar, started to learn how to play the guitar. Wow. Um, and he takes himself on three training sessions. So he does uh, two in the back garden and one goes for a jog. Um, and he's kept himself relatively sane uh, for a 19 year old. <laughs> yeah. For a sociable 19 year old. My other one's really easy. He's just on the PlayStation all the time. He'll cook with me, we'll chat, play with the cat. Um, He's like the digital world kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm just the same as I was before. Yeah. I mean, the only difference is you can't touch people. You know, I can still talk to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, what about a sort of general, general thoughts on, on 
society wellness uh, and things to watch for that people, you know, things they can do if they're feeling sort of being trapped and whatnot? I think the most important thing to do is not to react um, based on what other people are telling you. I think if you actually are in, you're going to be in one of two camps. One is that you're financially secure because you're getting paid. So if you are one of the furloughed, if you are the one getting 80% of your pay, I would say seriously take this time and enjoy it. Right. Enjoy it. If you're not having to go to work or your work has been cut so that you, you know it's not a pressure on your family life, then forget about work and, and focus on your children. Because I've worked from home for like 18 years and you can't do both. You're either with your children or you're at work. Yeah, I think it's too hard to try and join them, isn't it? Yeah, don't try, uh, you know, just make the switch and say, right, I'm with my kids now, or my wife, or my husband, or my partner, or whatever, or if you've got multiple partners, eh, I'm not <laughs> judging. Um, that is, and use that time. And then maybe even, maybe even start something that you meant to start. You know, don't sit there and just drink or waste watch your television. time. <laughs> yeah. Binge on Netflix. <laughs> and don't watch TV. It's the most detrimental thing you can do because it's passive and your mind switches off. Yeah. That is one of the worst things you can do. I've barely watched the news since, yeah. since being it. Because it just, for a start, I don't even understand which thing to believe. Yeah, there's, there's, there's so many. It's possible right now, isn't it? Yeah. So that's. That's the thing I would say is if, if you are if you are in a financial situation where you don't have to worry, then just don't S spend time with kids because it's pretty it's pretty much over now. Yeah. You know? So just sure. spend as much time as you can with your family and doing what you want to do, without without having that pressure of that worry. But if you're on the other end, then I would seriously suggest if you do have to work and you do have to juggle children as well then again you have to work around the children people seem to expect the children to make the adjustments but the, pa the parents aren't adjusting themselves so the way i always used to do it is i got up before the children got up i did what i had to do so then i was ready when the children were there and then anything that i did in the house i did with the children so if i'm hanging up the clothes they're hanging up the clothes with me that's an activity in their eyes Okay, yeah. they don't do it well, not at all. <laughs> Who cares? They'll, they'll get better. They'll get better, and then hey, they'll do it when they're older. They cook yeah, now. Yeah. They do, you know. And so my point is, you do stuff with them, and then because they notice you're spending that time with them, you can then make twenty minutes, thirty minutes in the day that are then yours, whilst they are just either in the room, or reading, or okay watching tv or doing whatever they're doing on the screen without you having to give them attention if you don't give them attention and you're badgering them from the start then you're going to have a problem yeah so it's all about that and then when they go to bed have your time either for yourself just to unwind or do your work and then unwind and then go to bed early earlier than you would like to <laughs> But all I'll say is, is it's truly, it's, it's something that John Rhodes said, is you, you have to have true recreation time and true work time. Right. You can't sit at the beach wishing you're at work, <laughs> thinking I've got to be at work, or be at work wishing you're at the beach. Writing a novel on the beach, yeah. <laughs> it's one or the other. Yeah. You know, you know, that's because that's, that's what does hamper, that's what hinders your brain to feel calmer. Mm. Well, I do really like the idea of incorporating the, the children into the activities. I've kind of done that with my daughter as she's been growing up. And the, the nice thing as well is not only do they learn how to be part of the family uh, and taking care of things, but you also get time to chat with them once, once you sort of, you know, yeah. spend that quality time talking about whatever. We've had great discussions on, she helps me uh, plan out some of my books, for example, and things. <laughs> yeah, they do. They're great. Yeah, but because when, I think when children hit six, seven years old they're, they're great company yeah. and before that yeah it is hard especially when you're like when you're a single parent it's downright boring sometimes <laughs> because you know all you hear is mummy 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 like, mm -hmm. so get 
get yourself on Zoom, get yourself talking to other people as well with your children. If, you know, if they've got homework, do it with somebody who you, goes to the same school as them at the same time. So it's, a, yeah. it's not that they see you as the punisher. It's so, it's not, to me, it's common sense. Yeah, I think we, we still haven't quite adapted <clears throat> for um, the video chatting world yet. Uh, um, even despite this lockdown for now almost eight weeks, it still it still feels I think uh, unnatural to many people. There, there could have been you know with the schools, for example, some schools have embraced it. Some schools like my yeah. child's school has has not embraced it at all. Oh, which is a bit disappointing, but. It is disappointing. Um, same thing happened with Harrogate College because my son's doing um, a um, bookkeeping course as well because he wants to do that on the side. Because I always said to him, it's good to have a few arrows in your quiver because then, you know, if you can do somebody's accounts for them, you can do it online, you can be anywhere. Yeah. So he's doing a bookkeeping course. For some reason, they couldn't do that at the beginning online. I said, well, yeah, they can. Yeah, I mean, you just put a camera in. Film yourself talking about it. <laughs> it's not difficult. It's not. The other one, he's doing a film production course, slightly different because they were supposed to be filming. And you know, they can't all go around with. <laughs> no. So, we, you either do adapt or you don't. I'm not sure if people will have the time to fully adapt. But again, I, if you, you asked about what people should do for, for their own personal wellness. Be true to your true nature. And also don't stress about things that you can't do anything about. Adapt to suit your family as well, because you're responsible for your family. It's not very nice to hear parents whinging about the stresses that the children are putting on them. Yeah. The children didn't choose to be here. The parents chose to have them. Some of them may not have chosen. Some of them may have just been <laughs> blessed with them. That's a nice but it's their responsibility and, and it's, it's, it's saddening that people are stressing with their children. They, they need to be able to be a co coherent, cohesive unit as a family. Right. Well, on that note, I think we're about out of time. So uh, thanks for joining me today. And uh, I was just wondering, uh, let people know where they can find you online and whatnot. Well, because I got my new web website address for my kids. I'm at Kiki and Friends kikiandfriends.co.uk and the other one's just wellnessandwriting.com Okay, well thanks again. Thank you very Thank much. You, Edwin. And, uh, enjoy the rest of the lockdown then. <laughs> I, we'll I talk will. To you, uh, we'll probably talk to you when it's all over <laughs> or maybe sooner. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your lockdown <laughs> and I hope to see you I hope to see you jogging some sometime. Well, like walking, walking. Walking, maybe cycling if we get the bikes out, yeah. <laughs> all yeah, right. Cycling's fun. Take care. All right, Edwin.